Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I'm gonna to show you guys what I use to choose my Linux OS for my computer. So let's get started. Now, on my last video, I actually finished building this system for my Linux editing rig, and you might've noticed that I've installed Pop! OS, but that wasn't the main choice that I wanted to choose. That was just the only operating system I had laying around, so I installed it. But ultimately, I stuck with MX Linux. Now, this is in a MX Linux uh, review. I actually will be doing that in the future, but I only had a couple of days with it, so I haven't had much time to figure out the quirks or what's working, what's not, what I should do, stuff like that. Just give me another week or two before I could make that full review. But in the meantime, I am going to show you guys how I came to this conclusion of installing MX Linux. Now, one of the first things that I do is check DistroWatch. Now, DistroWatch is a website that you could go to that has a lot of information on multiple Linux operating system distros. Uh, one of the things that I follow is the page hit ranking. On the right side, you can see which one is ranked number one, which one is ranked number two. Uh, sometimes I follow along with this one, and I also will check the trending for the past 12 months to see what you know shot up or what's good now you're going to see it's a two different list like it became open mandriva for number one but if i went back to the last six months of page hit ranking you're going to see that uh mx linux is top now i always wanted to test mx linux because it was a system d free system which means it's not using system d and it's actually using sysv in in it i don't even know how to say that correctly but sysv Basically, if you want to compare the two, SysD would be like uh, automatic transmission in a car while SysV is like a manual transmission. And you have more configurability with SysV versus SystemD. But for most desktop users, SystemD works perfectly fine. Same as SysV, but there, there's just more things you could do with it. And obviously, with more things you could do with it, the more power, you know, you, you, there might be things that could break. So you're going to have to watch out for that but you do get more control on it. Now, on this website, DistroWatch, one of the main things I do recommend highly checking out is their DistroWatch Weekly. This is something I always come back for every week just to see if there's any new uh, distros launching, new reviews, as well as tips and tricks. Now, one of the tips and tricks like this week, I just learned that dealing with low memory performance, uh, there's a system that you could use called Early OOM. It's been out for a while, but I've just heard about it now, so I'm gonna be checking that out. So yeah, Distro Watch Weekly is something you might want to check out. Now, uh, they also have reviews on different operating systems like KAOS. Yeah, pretty good news. Check it out. Now, after I find out the Linux operating system that I do want to kind of test, uh, I would actually head over to distrotest.net. Now, distrotest.net allows you to actually test the operating system without having to download or install it at all. It runs, it spins up a VM for you that you could actually do whatever you want with it. So I spun a deep in Linux over here in the back. I just hit start and then it just pops up for me. And then you have like a certain amount of time to play with it. And I, wow, this, I gotta say, deep in did change. I, I remember it used to use Budgie as the uh, default desktop uh, environment where you have the start menu and all that stuff. And now they went down to a bar. Um, I don't know what they're using right now. I might wanna play around with this in the future, but for now it's, it basically allows you to spin up a VM and test whatever you want to test. And a lot of the times what I use with distrotest.net is because I see a particular configurations with a certain operating system that I like, I might have to spin it up just to see what they did. And I don't want to download the uh, uh, image and spin up my own VM. I could just you know click start here and test whatever I want to test. So those are the two websites I mainly use to choose what operating system I want to go for. And for this system, I'm currently going to be using MX Linux probably for quite some time because I want to really use it and as well as turn it into my editing rig and allow me to kind of like install everything I need that is Debian based. Anyway, that's it for me guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any particular software that you must need to install into a Linux operating system before switching over, minus you know Adobe and Microsoft Office and stuff like that, maybe we could find alternatives for those. But yeah, let me know in the comments below because I know there are a lot of times where something is preventing you from switching over to Linux just because you're missing the application. And I might wanna do a huge list of like, you know, business apps or productivity apps and video apps. I want to do like a video on all the apps that surround something that you might need to have you switch over. So yeah, hit me up in the comments down below for any of those applications that you guys use. Now, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.